I'm the cute one. I'm the old lady. And I'm... Welcome back for episode 3 of Korracast. We got a little bit of a different episode for you guys today. As you know, there's no new episode of Legend of Korra to review. Uh, so we're going to take this episode as an opportunity to kind of go over some of the cool theories and ideas that you guys have been posting on episodes 1 and 2 of Korracast. But before we get started on the discussion, we want to let you know of our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash Korracast. Make sure you like us on there. And also, be sure to check out www.korracast.com, which is our official blog and website. Uh, it's a place to keep up on all the latest news for our show. Uh, it's pretty cool. And also make sure that you subscribe on YouTube if you haven't done that already. You probably saw that we just uploaded four new TV spots for The Legend of Korra. And all of them have some new footage and they're really cool. Especially uh, TV spot number three, which has a certain main character kissing another main character. And if you aren't familiar with our channel, like I said, head on over to YouTube.com slash The Chunks. That's our channel. Hit subscribe. Alright guys, you ready to do this? Let's do it. Yeah, some bending. Let's, let's oh, bend chunk, bending. The chunk variety. Starting it off, you guys had a lot of ideas about Amon. Earlier this week, there was a screen cap that actually had a timeline that showed the Avatar family tree, and in that showed Aang Katara's uh, three children, and one of them was named Boomy, and he turned out to be the only non-bender of their family. Valerie971HD uh, left a comment saying, I have a good feeling that Amon could actually be one of Aang's sons. I think it's a definite possibility, but it seems like so far they're trying to keep the show from being too dependent on the original. I agree and I disagree. If you think about the first two episodes, a lot of the main characters are direct descendants of Aang. Right, there are a lot of characters that are connected to the original series, but it seems like the creators, they don't want the show to be dependent on the original. The way that I would like it to be is kind of like the new Star Trek movie that came out, where if you've seen the old Star Treks, you appreciate the new Star Trek a lot more. But if you haven't seen the old, it, you still understand, you can still walk, pick it up and watch it. Where's the line of where you have to come up with new characters who have different backstories and aren't directly related to the old characters of Avatar. Or is there such a line? Five. Five? Five. Yes. Moving on. There's a lot of theories going around on the boards that Amon is secretly something. Something. Either a bender. Uh, my theory was that he um, was a past bender, maybe a bad guy, and then Aang, being the non bot person he was, instead of killing him, decided to energy bend his powers away. It definitely yeah. seems like there's a consensus among fans that he has some kind of vendetta against benders because he can't bend. I would like to see him maybe be like a bender of some thing we haven't seen, seen already. Like maybe he is a mind bender. I don't know. Is a snow bender. Snow bender. Well, someone who doesn't think that uh, Amon is actually a bender, uh, this is Disgraced101, says that the speculation that Amon is a bender is unwarranted. Like the lion turtle dude once said long ago, before the time of the Avatar, people did not bend the elements, they bent energy. Well, my question is, how, how do you become an energy bender if you don't get touched by the lion turtle on the head? Like, can, can you ask, can you go up to Mr. Lion Turtle, like, hey, Mr. Lion Turtle, enlighten me on the ways of energy bending. And I'm like, alright. And that's it. It's definitely a gray area. I, uh, this is from... I don't... N-O-D-D-E-S. I expect that the Equalist and Amon is going to be like Xavier slash Magneto, Martin Luther King slash Malcolm X. So the Equalists and Sympathizers wanting equality, but Amon and Extremists in her circle want domination. I'm pretty sure that Amon is the leader of the Equalists, but actually that is an interesting point because you could look at the Avatar and the quote good guys as Xavier and you know, oh, those I see people. What you're well, we uh, don't know Amon's full intentions, so he might have just drawn people with his ideas. We don't know what his overall scheme is. Remember when, you know, Magneto talked that whole game about how he wants mutants quality, and then in X-Men 2, he's using Cerebro to kill all the humans. It could be the similar thing where he is going to kill all the benders. <laughs> uh, novelist Vampire Girl, they said, After having watched the entire first series and the first two episodes of Legend of Korra, I have to say that I think that Aang and Zuko had the best intentions for Republic City. I think that Korra will realize this and make the other councilmen realize it then find and push for a better solution than an all-out rebellion. That actually would be an interesting turn, because it could be that uh, they start to turn her to their way of thinking, and then she, as the Avatar, has to come up with a peaceful solution, because ultimately that's what the show has to be right. about, yes. right? It's going to be the Avatar trying to make peace. Right? I yeah. really don't think that's going to be the case. I, I hate to say that the TV spots spoiled me, but all they are is really just Mako and, and Bolin getting electrocuted by the Equalists. Okay. It does not seem like it's possible for there to be a peaceful solution between the two. Okay. Hmm. Sure, but you can't tell me that that Korra, even if she 
and manages to end the finding with the equals, she's not, she's going to turn a blind eye to Republic City. She's still going to see the suffering and the poverty and want to fix Republic City. Yeah, that's true, but I think you're also confusing Korra's personality with Aang's. Aang would have been thinking the way that you're thinking in that he would put Republic City first. Okay. Korra has more of uh, punch people and then fix the problems later. That'll be part of her, her arc. That'll be part of her journey. September Irish 69 said, Surprised not to hear you discuss why Asuk didn't show up for the match. The pro betting games are fixed by the same criminal organization that is shaking down the shopkeepers. What if Amon is the head of both the criminals and the revolution? That's a very detailed theory. And I, I'm glad to see that people are actually thinking that far ahead. I'll admit, I never actually thought about what happened to that dude. Yeah, yeah I thought he just kind of quit the team. Yeah, he seems angry. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's kind of, it fits in with the, the 20s jazz era vibe that the show is, is, is pushing so far. So maybe in episode 3 of Legend of Korra, uh, they might show Hasuk, like, chained up somewhere, just saying like, oh, I'm missing my match. It doesn't necessarily need to be a tie to the Equalist or anything, because there could be multiple bad guys. But yeah, I, I like the idea that this thing that Korra is going to use to ground herself in Republic City and understand it and help her airbend could have a darker side. Uh, one theory I had um, where in the second episode Amon says that he needs to step up his plans now that Korra's in the city. My theory was that he's going to use Korra in part of his plans to expose benders as oppressing the non-benders. Yeah, Korra could really mess things up right now. Yeah. So, she could ruin her public city. Alright, well cool. That, that got a lot of good theories going on. You guys put a lot of... Uh... Yeah, alright, that's good. <laughs> So this is a new segment we got going on on the Coracast. So basically, once we get to a thousand subscribers, we're gonna do a special prize giveaway. And so what do we got in the prize corner this week? But this was exclusive to the 2010 San Diego Comic Con. And uh, yeah, I mean it's just an awesome poster of Cora looking out of Republic City. Let's look at her. She looks so so majestic. Sturdy. Yeah. She looks sturdy like a mountain. Once we hit a thousand subscribers on our YouTube channel, we will officially announce the drawing. It'll be a random drawing from our fans to win this plus a couple other goodies we got. So go ahead and click subscribe if you haven't. Do it. Subscribe. Okay, so for our actual viewer response segment, uh, you guys left a lot of good comments and responses for our question that we gave you last week. Uh, so here's some of the ones that we thought were pretty good. I think she could be the superhero of Republic City, but not like Batman or Superman. I think she'll do some vigilante work when she runs into crime or something, but I don't think she'll go out looking for crime to stop. Really, I think most of her action will be if she's attacked by the Equalist. P.S. I agree, dude on the left, you are very cute. Winky smiley face. Korra definitely is the superhero for Republic City. People are not as reverent to the Avatar as they were. Remember they mentioned in The Last Airbender that each Avatar is more human than the one before. Since the character is centralized, she will be forced to acclimate and gain her stripes. She will have to be more human. Korra becoming a superhero is an exercise of the Avatar becoming more human. I have a feeling Korra will become the superhero that Republic City deserves, but only when she fully realizes her potential as the Avatar by mastering not only air, but her Avatar state. There's a nice symmetry there. But I would be pleasantly surprised if Bright decided that she gets a jump start on her superheroics before then. It would be even more surprising if we were shown the roles of superhero and supervillain subverted and deconstructed between Korra and Amon. So thanks a lot guys for your responses, that was some really awesome feedback, and here's a viewer response question for this week. Okay guys, do you think that Korra and Mako and Bolin are going to form their own rock group called Korra and the Rockbenders? What do you think? No. No. Oh. No. This week we want to hear your guys' coolest, craziest, most creative theories as to where the show's going. Craziest theories. Zuko's a zombie, he comes back from the dead, and mm -hmm. he bites Korra's head off. I'd like to see that theory. The sky's the limit. Even if you don't even actually believe in this theory, even if it's not even possible, be creative on this one. Ones that we like, we'll probably feature in the next episode. Rock Benders! Okay. okay. Take three. All right, don't talk about the girls in the comment section. I got this. I got this. All right. I'm Vince Rizzo, and I love you. Nope. I'm Vince Rizzo. Can I have your number? No, Vince. I'm Vince Rizzo, and I love you. Nope. nope. No. No. Nope. Try again. Nope. I, did, I almost had it. I'm Vince Rizzo, and my muscles are gigantic. Okay, how about we try this later? Yeah, we'll, we'll come back to it. Okay.